Okay, what I want to make here is like a little cityscape. And you can see I've already got a box with a lot of subdivisions in it. And I went ahead and extruded some of these up a little bit. So like city blocks. This is like a 5x5 five five, uh, city that I'm making. And I want to show a little bit about how to apply a texture to this using uh, using uh, UVW um, textures. So I'm just going to convert this to editable poly. I already did it. I just want you to see me do it. And then, because that's what this is, is an editable poly. Editable poly. So uh, I'm going to add a modifier to this. I'm in my modify panel, drop down menu, scroll all the way down to UV or unwrap UVW. That's what I want. Unwrap UVW. So that modifier is on there now. And now I'm going to click where it says parameters for unwrap UVW. I'm going to click on edit. And uh, what I normally do here is go from vertex subobject mode. Let me. Squeeze this down a little bit for your sakes. All right, so I'm in my Edit UVWs dialog box. And right now, by default, it's on Vertex Subobject Mode. I'm going to go over to where it says Face Subobject Mode. I'm going to, oh, actually, let me make this look prettier. See all those boxes? I want to get rid of that checker there. So I'm going to click this show map and turn it off. I'm also going to go to options, preferences, and turn off the show grid. And it's going to be hard to see this, but I'll say OK. OK. I'll say OK there. And I think that'll be better. And now I'm, going to, I'm in face subobject mode. So I'll window all this stuff. You can see it all got selected, even the bottom, which we can't see. So I'm going to go to Mapping, Normal Mapping. And I'm going to say that I want top-bottom mapping. And I want to turn off Rotate Clusters, because I want them to be lined up the way I'm used to seeing them. And I'll hit OK. Now what we have is the top. Let's prove it. There's the top. And the bottom, which if I click on the bottom, you see you can't see the bottom. So you know what? I don't care about this bottom. So what I'm going to do with it, since we can't see it anyway, so I'm going to scale it down and move it out of the way. Move it out of this blue square, which means it won't become part of the texture. And this is what I do want to texture. And I'll just scale it up a little bit and fit it inside the blue box. And uh, I'm not going to be really too precise about this because I want to do this in a hurry. So now, uh, not too bad. We've got the top view of this thing, and that's the most important thing because this is streets and so on. But you could make the argument and say, well, I want those curbs to be a special color. So what I could do is grab all those curbs. And I don't think I'm going to do it. But if I wanted to, I could grab all of them, and I could flatten them all and uh, lay them on top of each other. Now I'm just going to do a few so you can see what I'm talking about. But I could go all the way around and click all of them. Now they're all selected. And uh, what I could do for them is say, uh, probably flatten mapping. And I'll say, um, and I don't care if they rotate, so I'll say OK. There they are. Let's move them out of the way. Let's slide over. Let's uh, rescale them so that they're quite small. They're not as important as the top view, in my opinion. And let's go here and just move this up a little bit so I have room for those things down below. And since these are very unimportant in my view, uh, we can move them here or we could even do this. We could overlap them and save space in our texture. So I could say I want that to be here and that to be here. And then I can paint them all at once and they'll all have the same uh, paint. And I'm not going to belabor this. I'll just do this real quick and dirty. And you can go in and, and snap and there's finer tools for doing this. But maybe conceptually some of you will get this and just say, it'll give you ideas you didn't have before about how to stack um, UVs and get more out of your texture area. So now I'll just shove all this 
Again, doing this in a real hurry. Shove this right down in here. You could even make it a little bit bigger now. So when we paint the texture, we've got a little bit more detail we can paint on that curb. So you can do all of those curbs with a size about this big. But the most important thing is this. Now, how do we see this in Photoshop so we can paint it? Well, I'll go to Tools, Render UV W Template, and I'm going to make it 1024 by 1024. It's a good size. Factors of 2, from 2 to 4, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 124. That will work good. And I'll hit Render UVW Template. Now this came up when I clicked that. And now I want to save this. So I'm going to click the little Save button. And I don't care what format this is. GIF would work. JPEG will work. And uh, I'll put this in my... Mm. I'll put it in my flying vehicles folder, it doesn't matter. So we'll call this thing um, we'll call this thing um, city block template. This is just the template, so don't get it mixed up with the texture. And we'll say save and OK. And now I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. OK, now I have it open in Photoshop and that's what it looks like it's on a background layer I'm gonna double click that background layer if it'll do it for me okay and we'll just call that template so now it's a regular layer and I'll add another layer and I'll call this texture now I'm gonna take template and put it above texture and if I remember this process right we will take template and say that it should be a screen that means when we go to texture, if I did it right, because I often mix it up, uh, and I go to my brush tool, now I can paint on that and still see the template, which is really important. So uh, what I want is a uh, this to be like a city block. So let me see if I can come up with something. Okay, so I did a little painting here in Photoshop. This is probably something that would be better done in Illustrator. But uh, just for something quick and dirty, I've got some lines in. I've got some uh, areas for the buildings to sit on. And the template, of course, which will turn off. So we'll turn off that template. I don't want that. I don't want those lines on my texture. And then I gave a little bit different color to the... Um, oh, I made a mistake here. Okay, let me just fix that real quick. If I take that color and put it in right here I kind of painted over part of my texture so just really quick kind of fix that and that should be good enough so there's my texture my templates turned off my lines are on I'll do a file save as and uh, we'll call this city block texture as opposed to template and save that and that's what it's telling me, so I'll say yes, I want to save that. And then I want one that we can work with too, probably a GIF. So we'll say um, save as, since it's no, not much shading on it, we'll say, um, where to go? I don't see GIF, there it is. Save. And OK. And OK. Now we'll go back to... Uh, 3 Studio, close all this, and we'll apply our texture and turn that off. And I'll just go to one big view. And uh, M for materials. There's my materials editor. I'm going to make a new material. We'll call it City Block. And I'll click on Diffuse, but not on the gray here, but on the button to the right of the gray where it says None fast way in anyway and we'll go to bitmap and double click it and under uh, my 3ds max go to our flying vehicles and city block texture and open and then to apply it we'll just select the object and hit the little 
assign material to selection button and then to see it we'll say show map in viewport we'll click that and close that and we're good texture and it'll work so um, we'll go ahead and file export selected unity and flight sim assets and we're calling it an fbx and it'll be city block a good enough name and save and this is kind of a tall dialog so we do want geometry and let it embed the textures and there's nothing else you need to check here except OK everything else should work and we'll go back to unity now okay you might as well see this um, so here's my texture I made and there's the max file there's my FBX so I'm going to take the FBX and the city block texture and control C and go to where I've got all this stuff in unity which is I'm using Unity Engine and my project is Flying Box 3 I'm still working with and Assets. I'm just going to put everything in one Assets folder to keep it simple. Um, you don't want to do that with too many things or it gets confusing. It's a lot of things to look at. And now I'll go ahead and launch Unity and we'll bring that stuff in. Okay, I'm in Unity. I'm in a scene I did a while back. Let's bring up the proper scene. Um, I'll open up a scene called Unit U vehicle seven, and you can already see the city block is in here, and its texture. And this looks okay. Looks okay. So we'll bring city block in to our hierarchy panel. We're just going to drag it in. There's city block somewhere in there. Um, let's see if we can find it this way. A city block as long as it's selected and I hover over my um, scene and hit F that'll bring in the city block now it's way too small but we can resize it in fact I don't even know if I paid attention to the size of this when I made it to be honest I think I uh, did it in kind of a hurry so we'll say size let's make it 100 by 100 And I don't think we need a size in Z unless we're worried about terrain popping through, in which case we could say 10 or so. And let's see how big we really need to make it now that we have some perspective. Okay. And I may need to do some uh, editing on my terrain too. My terrain's kind of bumpy there. So let me work on that for a minute. Okay, I'm just uh, playing around with height, and then I've scaled it 500 by 500 by 50, just to get something in there. Well, it needs a boundary condition, doesn't it? So let's take it, select it, and go to Component. Probably a box collider would be wiser, because it's probably more efficient than a mesh collider. I just added a box collider instead of a mesh collider. It fitted itself perfectly, so there's nothing for me to worry about there. It's much better collision. When it's a simple shape like that, that isn't going to work on your flying vehicle or some of the more unusual shapes like the buildings. right? So let me do a little bit more work on this. So that's it. Let's just try it out. And then, you know, as you go through, you'll see things you need to work on. This still looks way too clean on the street. I need a lot more stuff um, to make this look like a real city, but it's a start.